So we're now in Affinity and we're going to take a look at the tools for the Vector Studio or Workspace. So just make sure that you are in Vector up here. And from the top, we have the Move tool. This is great for moving things around, rotating and resizing. I'll just give you a super quick demo. There we go. We have a rectangle and we can rotate it around. We can hold Shift to snap to 15 degree increments and we can resize. We can Where's the rotate? There we go, rotate. So this is probably the tool that you're gonna use most of the time. And you can also deselect by just clicking anywhere or pressing escape. Right, next up, we have the artboard tool. And if you do hover over these, you get lots of information. Goodness me, that, that has quite a bit there. And usually there's a keyboard shortcut for many of the tools as well. So we can add new artboards like so, or we can just use this tool to draw our own and then we can customize the size from the transform panel right let's undo that before we make things rather messy right next up let's go and create a shape don't worry we will get to more of those shapes lots of fun to be had there now this one is the node tool this is kind of like your direct selection tool in illustrator equivalent and we can use this to select individual anchor points and modify them and all that stuff so with this first shape, this is kind of like a live shape. So we have properties that are specific to this shape type at the top. So if you want to edit all of the individual anchor points, you've got to convert this to curves. So now this is where the node tool comes into play. We can move these around. We can convert them and then adjust them in uh, all sorts of weird and wonderful ways. So again, that's going to be very, very useful. This one. Oh, no, we've got another one. Yeah, point transform tool. This one is a little bit new to me, but I think you can sort of use it like a scale tool, but not really. So <laughs> you can grab this point here and move it around. I don't know, let's go for here. There we go. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we're scaling to or from that point. So slightly different to Illustrator's scale tool, but with a bit more practice, I think I can probably get my head around that one. Right, this next one, corner tool. So if we go and grab a rectangle, goodness me, rectangle tools getting some love today. We've got C, that's the keyboard shortcut for this. And what we can do is select individual or multiple points and round off the corners. So let's go and grab these over here. Whoops, make sure you press C. There we go. And I've created something, not entirely sure what that is, but um, yeah, I've made it. Now, if we go back a few steps, the next tool, this is the contour tool, and this is O on the keyboard. And what we can do with this is we can make a shape larger or smaller, and we can round off the corners. So effectively, this is kind of like Illustrator's path offset. Now we do have a whole bunch of options at the top here. And honestly, I need to play around with this a bit more. And then once you're happy with what you've done, you can bake the appearance and that will kind of set the transformation. And then you can use the node tool that we covered a moment ago to then go and adjust all the individual points in the geometry of the shape. No idea what I'm doing there. All right, pen tool, good old pen tool. This is P on the keyboard, as you might expect. And we can use this to do custom shapes. So we could use this to draw a, a line or we could click, 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 to like do a straight line dot to dot, or we can click and drag and we could draw some lovely curves. Now, one of the differences with this and Illustrator is that we can't really see how the curve's gonna look as we're creating it until we turn on this option here, rubber band mode. So if you're like me and you're coming from Illustrator, this is gonna be really useful because then you can kind of see what the curve looks like before you commit to clicking and dragging. Right, next up we have the pencil tool. So we can use this to draw freehand pretty much. So there we go, fantastic. Now what you can also do is check the stabilizer and this is gonna stabilize your path. So as you can see, I'm using a mouse and uh, this doesn't look especially good, but then when I let go, it's gonna automatically smooth it a bit more. So it makes drawing freehand with trackpads and mice a lot easier. And if we click and hold under this, we've got the path brush tool. So this is like drawing brushes in Illustrator, your vector brushes. Let's go and do something like this. There we go, fantastic. Well, not really. But if we go over to path brushes, 
Oh my goodness, these are so fun. Not these again. <laughs> oh goodness, I'm going to have a lot of fun with these. Oh my god. <laughs> what on earth? Let's see if we can choose some other ones. Yeah, so we do. We have some like let's let's just switch to acrylics. It's probably safer for now. So we can grab this and we can click and drag. And this is all vector as well. So these are vector brushes, these path brushes. And we get a real-time preview as well, which is kind of cool, actually. Let's try a different one. Actually, no, let's try something. Let's go for markers. Classic flat marker. Oh, it's just so cool. You get that real-time preview. And it's so fast and responsive as well. Oh, love it. As you can see, I'm quite the artist. But anyway, we're going to move on now. The knife tool. Right, this is cool. So slightly different to Illustrator in that if I use the pencil tool to draw a lovely squiggly line. In Illustrator, we have the knife tool for cutting shapes with a fill and the scissors tool to cut shapes that are made up of a path. Well, in Affinity, we just have one tool and it does both. So we have the knife tool here. And what we could do is we can hover over the path and you can see it actually changes to a scissors icon, which is a nice touch. And we can click there and it adds a cut and then we can use our node tool. And we've quite literally just cut the path. We've given it a little snip and we can now separate those two parts. And if I go and let's create another rectangle and we'll use the knife tool again, but on a solid shape, we should be able to just slice through it and separate it. Yep, very good. Now the keyboard shortcut for this is K as well. Now, can we do a straight slice by holding? No, not that. Maybe shift. That makes sense. Yep. So we can do straight cuts like that. And then we can just separate all these pieces into, well, lots of separate pieces. Right. Next up, we have the width tool. So again, we're going to need to draw a weird and wonderful line. And the keyboard shortcut for this in Affinity is W. And we can just click on a point and we can adjust the width. Really simple. And this is a fantastic addition. Right, next up, we've got the fill tool. So we're gonna need another shape. Let's just make it a black rectangle for now. And we can click the fill tool and we can add a variety of different fills. So what we can do is actually go to the drop down here. As you can see, we've got solid. So we could just go and pick a different color and it's gonna change it to that color. Or we've got different gradients. So we've got linear, which is effectively in a straight line, radial, which will emanate to or from the center, and then lots of other fun ones that I haven't honestly even touched yet, so cannot wait to get stuck into those. But we'll start with linear for now. And we have a lovely, responsive and fast gradient tool, much more like Photoshop's one, definitely not like Illustrator's one, which is outdated and clunky as heck. And we just have to select different points on the slider, pick the colors, move it around freely, and then adjust that midpoint. Honestly, it's so fast. It's an absolute joy to use that feature. Right, transparency tool. So kind of similar to this, but we can now go from one color to transparency. And this is something designers, at least me personally, I need a lot and it's nice to have this as a separate tool. So if you want to quickly add a fade to transparency on something or over a design, like maybe a color overlay, you've now got a dedicated tool to do that. Okay, right, onto the shape tools. This is pretty insane. So you've got lots of preset shapes here. This is amazing. So a lot of these in Illustrator you'd have to create yourself, which is fine, totally doable, but here it's just much more convenient. So we're going to go and grab the cog tool. We can click and drag. And this is still a live cog shape. So I've got lots of cog specific settings up here. So I can fine tune everything and I can make a beautiful cog. So we've got the tooth size. We've got the notch size. We've got all sorts of weird and wonderful settings. There we go. That, I mean, that's not really a cog anymore. I don't know what that is, but yeah. So we can adjust the number of teeth as well. I feel like I've learned the anatomy of a cog today. And that's amazing. This is a live shape. 
so you can update and change anything at any point. And if you do want to go and fine tune and adjust every anchor point individually, just remember that you will need to go and convert it to curves. But you will lose the ability to change everything in the options bar at the top. But sometimes that is the trade-off. Now, in addition to that, some of these shapes have different presets. And arguably, these aren't really cogs. Like, <laughs> that could be a cog. That's probably not a cog. That's definitely not a cog. But they're amazing presets nonetheless. So here, for example, we've got that star spiky thing. I don't even know what that is. Here we have a sunburst. So this is lovely. And then we could go and change the color to a lovely orange. So if you, that's not really a lovely orange, but it'll, it'll do for now. So if you need like a starburst or sunburst, whatever it's called, you might not think to use it, but it's under the cog tool. And there's loads of other presets there. So I would definitely encourage you to play around with them. Right, next up, we have the Shape Builder tool. Now to demo this, I will need a couple of volunteers. Star tool, you'll do. In fact, we'll just have a couple. And let's go and pick a different color for this one. So there we go. We're gonna make them overlap with each other as well. Maybe something like this. And then we select them both. And we go and choose the Shape Builder tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is S. And what we can do with this is we can choose whether we want to add or subtract at the top here. And then we can click and drag to combine different shapes together. Or if we undo that, we can hold down Alt or Option and we can click and drag or just single click and it will knock out that area of a shape. So it's great for combining shapes together, especially if your design is a bit more intricate. Now underneath this, we have the Vector Flood Fill tool. And what this enables us to do is to pick a color from either up here or at the bottom of the toolbar. Let's go for green, I think. And then we can just fill that color in. Really, really simple. Um, that's pretty much it for that one. Now we've got some text related stuff. So we have the artistic text tool. This is like your point type in Illustrator. You click, you type, and then you just resize. You can change all the font properties at the top and it's super simple and great for titles. Now, if you do want to have area text as it's known in Illustrator, so your paragraphs of text or whatever, frame text tool is where it's at. So you can click here and then you can start typing. Let's furiously type to get to the end. There we go. And you can see it wraps the lines. And if we press escape to come out of that, we can now adjust this and you can see the lines wrap and actually, while we're here, let's just double click, delete that. We'll go up to text, go down to insert, and we can insert some filler text. This is your placeholder text, which is fantastic. Love this. And we can adjust that. And then we can change the size as well. And you see all of these changes happen in real time. Like you get a live preview. And I absolutely love it. Now here... We have the place tool where we can place an image. Simply click this, select an image on your computer, and you can then paste it in. Down here, we have the vector crop tool. Now this is a really cool addition. And we're just gonna have to pretend for a moment that I've made an amazing illustration. So bear with me, just pretend this is an incredible illustration, the best illustration you've ever seen in your life. So if we select this absolute mess, also masquerading as an illustration, we're gonna group this with Command or Control G. So you can see in the layers panel, this is now all grouped together. And then with the group selected, we're going to go and grab this tool over here. And we get these control points appear. And we can now adjust this and we can just trim off all of the excess outside of the illustration. So this is great if you're going to be creating lots of patterns. You know, patterns rarely ever have a clean edge to them if they're repeated or tiled patterns anyway. And this enables you to just trim off all the excess and have clean edges. And then just press V to go back to the main move tool. And we can now move this around and just resize it freely as one object. And then if you do want to go and adjust the crop again, don't worry, all your artwork isn't lost. You've just got to go and extend it and adjust it a bit more. Now let's keep this uh, monstrosity for a second because we're going to go and use the measure tool. 
Now this one is where we can just use it to measure different points and we get some options at the top. Um, I don't know how you add these permanently and I don't know if you can because as soon as you click off it disappears. So I guess if you need to measure things this can be useful but I'd love to see a way where you could just you know click a button and it then stamps that as a graphic so you can annotate lots of complex diagrams with measurements that would be cool but for now i think it is limited to just measuring the area tool ah this is kind of cool as well not really something i would use but if you do technical drawings and diagrams you can see the total surface area and the individual surface area of different segments so if that's your kind of thing that might be useful we also have the eyedropper tool, or no, the color picker tool. Sorry, I was in illustrator mode for a second there. And this enables us to zoom in in this little circle and we can pick a very specific color. And then that becomes our selected color. And then this one down here is similar, but slightly different, the style picker tool. So if we've created some text and we have a stroke and it has a certain thickness and a certain color, we can just copy all of the style properties from one object to another. And if you do want to access even more tools from all of the different studios, we have them here. As you can see, there are many. And you can drag these on and off your toolbar and fully customize your workspace.